Oh, Everything sucks. Why the f you guys made sure this is the right product, okay? So now that the stairs are done and the concrete is done uh, on the patio part of things, it's time to start building this kitchen. We're gonna do concrete countertops in place as well as a uh, stone veneer on the front and potentially a custom door. So we have the two uh, bump outs here. For us, it's more important that these are parallel to one another than they are to pretty much any other measurement, solely because we have an uneven uh, surface that's gonna be put onto the rest of the substrate and it'll hide any imperfections, but we don't wanna put this perfectly made griddle in here and have different reveals on the left and right. We want that to look really nice and sharp. So Sam's got one screw in, pivoted this side. This side's ready to get screwed down. We're gonna work all these tops in and then we'll get to building the trim for the rest of the form. Love when you get overly aggressive. They're perfect. Yeah, they only fit one way, so they're good. This, this might be big enough that we could run two eggs and we could dual like brisket smoke off, touch eggs or something. You could have like one guy here, one guy there. I'm just saying. Your challenge is accepted. I will keep my eggs where my eggs are. <laughs> you can touch other eggs, but we will definitely cook some briskets. Brisket off. Brisket to beat us. So the next thing we're gonna do is start cutting our edging. We got a lot more than we need. So we're gonna just creep up on our corners because of the bull nose. It makes it a little hard to measure and we don't know a better way to do it. So we've got the first top screwed down. Uh, what you're gonna do next is you're gonna use some duct tape in order to make these nice and tight on the outside. Uh, essentially, you can just pull all of your gaps and reveals together, which is a nice thing about these forms. What's really cool about these Z counter forms is that they stay. Um, there's a lot of companies that'll use melamine forms and you have to take them out of the forms and stuff like that. These, they just break off at the bottom and then unless you crawl underneath, you, you can't see it. Really, really cool product. They work really well for what they do on my house. We are just idiots with power tools. Didn't know what the hell we were doing. Ooh, it actually looks pretty good. Like, really good. Hey, Jordan, there's tons of bubbles. And they're, they're local yokels. They're just over the hill there in Scott Township. Manufactured down around a house. While John and Sam finish. Stop! We are giving Jordan the reins on doing something on his own. Just want you guys to know how proud we are of Jordan right now. Let's get around the car. Damn it, Jordan. I got my eyeballs are typically closed when he's doing that. While John and Sam finish up getting the uh, forms around the rest of this, I'm gonna go ahead and install this mesh. It uses this grid system, and then there's these standoffs, so it helps reinforce the cement instead of using like a rebar. And then the standoffs keep it from falling down into the cement. So we'll get these cut up and installed and just double time. Double time, double time. These are the clips that you put in to keep it up in the air. Very time consuming to put them in. You do like a row, you make like a grid system. It looks cool at the end, you'll see. It just will take a minute. All right, so if you run into a situation where you have a butt joint like this, it's fine. You just wanna make sure you duct tape it. Uh, that way you don't have stuff pouring down underneath into your cavity down below. We're gonna get these two here, as you can see, Sam developed a way to return our mold back into our cabinet, which will allow us to keep that nice edge profile because on the bull nose, if you just stop it, it's just flat on the sides and that's okay, but it, it looks better to have that, that bull nose on all of them. Good talk, see you out there guys. So we're ready for the pour. We've got everything is uh, sealed up with duct tape and any of the gaps, we have all the corners pinched together. Jordan got all the fiber laid in there with the Z-form clip and the uh, mesh, which is a really cool product. If you were to do this without that part, you'd have to put either rebar or wire mesh in there while you're pouring, make sure it's up in the middle of your concrete. We've got concrete form mix from Z counter forms. We're gonna mix this up and then we're gonna tint it. It comes white and you add your own pigment. Sam's gonna select the pigment considering this is Sam's and we should be able to get ripping. 
got a uh, tablespoon here. We're measuring the amount of pigment we're putting in so we can control it and then we can be consistent bucket to bucket to bucket. Sam said go darker, second scoop. Okay, so one of the very important parts of doing this kind of concrete work is you want to make sure that you push all of the concrete down into the edges here. It won't just fall down in there, so you gotta actually pack it in, and then we'll hit it with a vibrator later. What's wrong? Battery died. Oh no. Too dry, too wet, too dry, too wet. Fighting, uh, it's pretty humid out, like really humid out. 90 some percent humidity, which is not prime conditions for something like this. It's pulling all the water out and uh, pulling the white out of the uh, out of concrete and bringing it coming to the top. To pour it um, thicker than you're dealing with, it's harder to deal with and you can't screen it very well. So we're trying to find that happy, happy middle. So, oh, and we don't have the right mixer, so that's good. I just really love the print on bounty paper towels so much that I decided I was gonna stamp paper towel print into project. I kid. Uh, we were running into like some little bit of wet or uh, the humidity. I'm not really sure what's doing it, uh, but I just needed to get some of that moisture up the top. This one went really well. It was a little on the dry side and we were able to kind of revive it. These two are a little wet, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to bring a little bit more dry mix into it to kind of balance out that ratio and uh, we'll be able to save this. So we call it overhandle. Do we need the mixer? This is humidity, it's killing. didn't go as planned. Mostly because Jordan only brought DeWalt batteries, Sam only had two Milwaukee batteries, and our mixer is Milwaukee. And I didn't bring the big battery. Trifecta of stupidity. Therefore, we had to use a drill. I'm not buying one. And the drill basically just beat me up for two hours. And uh, I think we're gonna have to get built at a grave. So we're gonna let these dry overnight, pop those molds in the morning. The next morning. They are dry. The next step is gonna be take these forms off. I really hope that these edges turned out good. We had some issues with consistency on the concrete, as you saw, some was wet, some was dry. It seemed like it was getting into the corners good, but honestly, I have no idea. So let us pray that these work. Typically, you want to let these sit for at least 24 hours. It's been about 15 since we, we, we did these. We just have to crack these off on our side before we put the stone on. So that's why we're kind of doing it now. And we also, we poured in extreme humidity. I'm talking like 95% humidity. And so these were setting up before we even got time to vibrate them. There was three of us working on them. Jordan was helping me mix and then Sam was screening them. We were literally didn't, couldn't get to them fast enough with three people. So if you're gonna do a project like this, just be prepared that the ambient temperature and the humidity affects concrete immensely and that things may set up faster than you anticipate. We had a pretty shitty plan. We broke multiple buckets, mixer, fried a drill. Things were just not going as well as we thought. Um, and if I could go back and change anything, that would be it. Uh, we're gonna try to touch up the edges a little bit with some of the techniques we've run online uh, and kind of see how that goes. All right, so these have sat for a few days. Can you believe that the neighbors are literally doing the same thing we are? We didn't even, we didn't even plan this. They copied us. 
frankly. Right. No, I can't even claim that. The guy next door did come up to me the day before we started. He was like, we're starting a patio tomorrow. And I was like, that's weird. So are we. God bless America. Concrete has sat for like four or five days now. We're looking pretty good. We got the stonework done while these were drying to make sure that timing was working out as well as so we could stone straight up to the concrete. Last thing we want to do is these are still a little rough. We want to come back and we got this like polishing sanding kit on Amazon that I'll have a link down below for. And we're gonna hit these just to smooth them out a little bit and then put some seal on them. And that should be it. So these you can run them dry or they recommend a little bit of water, right? So therefore you're not, you don't need a wet sander and you're not ruining your, your grinder or polisher. Follow the directions, people. Do as I say, not as I do. Shall we? Hey. The last thing we need to do to wrap these countertops up is hit them with some sealer. The same company where we got all of our forms and stuff and the concrete has a sealer. It's an aqua thing. I think it's a water-based sealer, water-borne sealer, two component. Uh, we're gonna roll this on, let it dry, and these things are gonna be wrapped. And they're gonna look so much better when they look slightly wet, we think, at least we hope. America. That's gonna be a wrap on the kitchen counters. These things turned out pretty awesome, unlike the ones in my house that are a complete Jankosaurus. And that means that your opportunity to win one of these Pit Boss griddles, grills, or one of the other things we're giving away in this video is gonna be the phrase Jankosaurus. Hit the like button, comment down below Jankosaurus, and that will be your final opportunity to enter to win one of these grills. We're picking the winner in the next video, so make sure you're subscribed. I got the whole video series linked up for you right here. I'll see you there.